sitting is resumed. I now call the next debate, which is Universal Credit in Wales. Mr Stephen Doughty. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Sheridan. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship today. And um, it's delightful to see so many colleagues from across Wales have joined uh, me here on the bench today. And I'm an undoubted a number of them will wish to make interventions during my speech. Um, Mr Chair, um, we've been repeatedly been told by ministers that uh, universal credit would ensure that work pays, that it would improve incentives to work, that it would simplify the benefit system, and that it would be easy to introduce. I'm afraid to say, Mr Chair, that there are now widespread consensus that the universal credit might be fine in theory, but we're about to seriously see a situation where it's going to backfire in practice with very serious consequences for some of my most vulnerable constituents and indeed many of our constituents across Wales. Mr Chair, I've called this debate today because I wanted to draw attention to my sincere worries about the potential impacts on people across Wales, or as one colleague has described, it's a car crash waiting to happen. I, have give way. I will give way to my honourable friend. I thank my honourable friend for giving way. Is not part of the problem the whole climate of uncertainty and insecurity in which benefit claimants are living? In particular, in relation to the bedroom tax, we have carers who aren't going to be able to have uh, vis uh, night sitters, a bedroom available for them. We've got people on uh, home dialysis who don't have a room for home dialysis. And more worryingly, we have parents who, won't, who don't have uh, normal week custody of the child able to keep a room so that they can have custody of their children at weekends. Is this not something that the government should have sorted out first before they introduce yet more changes? Before I call, order, before I call uh, Stephen Doughty, I have just anticipation of a number of interventions could be coming and it would be acceptable um, if they could be brief. Stephen Doughty. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I would agree with what my honourable friend, the member for Bridgend, has said. Um, indeed, I'll come to the issues about uncertainty, and certainly that's the, what I've had reflected to me from many constituents and from many of the organisations that are working with those affected by these changes. Um, I, if I could make a little bit more progress, then I'll certainly give way. Um, I, I've spent a significant amount of time speaking to constituents. Um, one of the benefits of standing in a by-election is that you spend an awful amount of time out there speaking to people. This came up as a regular issue on the doorstep. I've been speaking with housing associations and other registered social landlords. I've been speaking with local authorities, indeed, uh, specifically with Cardiff, and indeed with other experts. And, and whilst there are a variety of views on whether the simplification of welfare payments is desirable, it is clear that there are consistent fears and, for, and forecasts of dire consequences that I do not feel that ministers and the DWP have adequately answered or addressed, and perhaps they can do so today. And I'll give way to my friend. I always uh, briefly, it seems to me that the governments have just not considered the inflexibility in the housing market. Or if they have considered, they don't seem to care. Is that the Honourable Gentleman's view as well? Indeed, and I, I would agree with the comments of the, the Honourable Member. Um, Mr Chair, coming um, as it does on top of two um, other, what my uh, friend, the Honourable Member for South Shields, called rancid measures, the bedroom tax and uh, the attacks on people in work uh, with the welfare operating bill that we saw a few weeks ago, um, I am deeply fearful of the impact of, on many of my most vulnerable constituents, not to mention, as I said, the organisations that support them. And let's take a look at some of the headlines for a moment. Um, on uh, Monday the 10th of December last year, the government published its new impact assessment for universal credit, um, which showed a, a number of very, very worrying facts. Um, first, that 800,000 people across the UK face lower entitlements. Um, the uh, original assessment published in 2011 said that there would be 2 million people facing lower entitlements under universal credit, but that number has now risen to 2.8 million, um, with an average loss of entitlement to that group of £137 per month, and I'll come to a Wales-specific statistic on that in a moment. Um, of those losers, 400,000 will be concentrated in the two lowest income groups. Um, we expect to see 600,000 more parents to lose out under universal credit. Um, we see uh, households are going to lose more. Um, I think in the original impact assessment it said that only 200,000 families would lose more than £75 per month. But the latest impact assessment says 1.3 million households will lose more than 100 per month. Um, an incredible 300,000 families will lose more than £300 per month, and that amounts to £3,600 per year. We're also seeing in the impact assessment, it points out that there are going to be higher administrative costs as a result of the changes, and that the department has in fact dropped its claims that it will tackle poverty. Um, that's now been removed from the 2012 impact assessment. 
We also see the delays that have been going on. Perhaps you know, we can come to the reasons for some of those delays um, later on when the Minister makes his remarks. But you know, we're already a significant number of months late with rolling out universal credit, and, and the DWP have been unable to confirm um, timetable. Indeed, there is great um, un lack of clarity on the part of my local authority and others as to how this is going to be rolled out and, and when. Friend give way? I will give I way. I thank my honourable friend for giving way. And does my honourable friend agree that there's still no real answers from the government about how those without bank accounts or internet access yes. will be helped to adapt to the new yeah. monthly payment and that's long overdue. Uh, absolutely and I'll, I'll be certainly coming to that point in, in due course. Um, and it's not just uh, those out there that I've been speaking to who have sincere worries about this as we've, we've heard reported in the press a number of times. Uh, one cabinet minister reportedly said in private that the information technology for the new system is nowhere near ready. It's a disaster waiting to happen. And I understand, um, I mean, who knows whether these rumours are to be believed, but there are indeed a number of cabinet ministers who share that view. Perhaps again a reason for uh, some of the delays that we're, we're, we're seeing. And Mr Chair, let me turn now to what is the specific imp impact on Wales. Well, based on an assessment and some rough calculations of those figures in that impact assessment issued in December, um, we estimate that a staggering 140,000 people across Wales could lose £1,600 a year, and that's based on an estimate of the Welsh population that's affected. And I'd be grateful if the Minister in his remarks could share the government's own figures and estimates for the number affected in Wales and how much, in fact, that they will lose out. And could they even perhaps provide a breakdown by local authority to help local authorities prepare for the impact of these changes? Mr Chair, aside from the raw figures, which are indeed shocking in themselves, um, I'd like to share um, some of the key fears I have, raised with, have had raised with me about the implementation of the Universal Credit in Wales. Firstly, the challenge of budgeting for many families. Secondly, as my honourable friend, the member for Newport um, East has, has mentioned, the digital divide uh, that we're going to see. Uh, thirdly, power relationships within the home. And fourthly, the risks being posed to local authorities, housing associations and other registered social landlords. Let me turn first, Mr Chair, to the, the first issue, that of budgeting. The Secretary of State uh, frequently appears to suggest that those of us who raise this issue are patronising our constituents. But rather than uh, take this in entirely complacent approach, um, I, I want to commend actually the work that organisations like the CAB, uh, the Cardiff and Vale Credit Union and housing associations like Cadwin in my own constituency are doing to support tenants by helping them to set up bank accounts, to set up jam jar accounts and other similar facilities in credit unions. And I want to also commend the work that the Welsh Government is doing to support those efforts. Levels of financial literacy, um, alone, let alone access to a bank account, um, are not, unlike this measure, universal. And I think we need to be absolutely realistic about the impact that this is going to have on many people. And perhaps rather than making huge assumptions, uh, the Minister could tell us what risks he sees of the problems in this area and what his department is doing to assist. I can certainly tell him that there's been varying or little support experienced by many of the organisations I mentioned from his department, let alone individual constituents. And that's for those who are even aware, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, let me touch on the moment on the issue of direct payments and the data from the own uh, uh, direct payment pilots which his own department has been conducting. Um, and I quote here a, a report uh, from Inside Housing magazine from uh, just a, a couple of days ago um, which uh, reports direct payment pilots report increased arrears. And it says in the article by a journalist there, Carl Brown, uh, landlords testing direct payment of benefit failed to collect 8% of rent on average in the first four months of the six pilot projects. I will give way to my honourable friend. Yeah. Would he care to also ask the Minister what assessments has been made of the effect on local councils that all these arrears will actually have because they're going to have a major cash flow and problem? Indeed, I absolutely Even agree with the a honourable uh, member from Ashley has made, and I'll come to that in due course. Um, return to what Mr Brown was saying, um, data released by the Department for Work and Pensions showed that 6,220 tenants across the UK were paid directly in the first four months of the projects. Um, and of those, 92% of rent was collected on average overall, meaning arrears were amount double the, the normal figure, and a total of 316 tenants have switched back to payment of benefit to the landlord. Um, and let me just take a, a Wales-specific figure here um, from, from Tor Vine, um, uh, Bronavon Community Housing and Charter Housing, um, 535 tenants involved in the first payments, um, and there have been 59 switchbacks so far, that's uh, around 11% switchbacks. And, you know, these are obviously deeply concerning figures and I think um, raise some of the issues that are, are there more widely. There are deep worries about how this is going to work in practice and to the support that is being provided to people. And there are also major implications for organisations which, um, which are supporting those tenants, whether that's local authorities or housing associations. Mr Chair, let me make some brief remarks about the digital divide. Uh, my colleague, the Welsh Finance Minister, Jane Hutt, has repeatedly warned that people with few or no IT skills could have difficulty applying for universal credit. And in 2010, figures suggested that around a third... 
a third of adults, I, I will give away a moment, let me just finish the remark. A uh, third of adults in Wales did not regularly uh, use the internet, and recent ONS figures suggest that around 20% have never used it. Uh, I'll give way to my honourable friend. Good. Could I say, as the, the former Deputy Minister for Digital Inclusion, I think he makes a very, very strong point. And I know that in my own borough of Caerphilly, some 37% of the uh, population are digitally excluded. That borough is making provisions to, to ensure that those people have access to computers. But in many local authorities, where there are, for example, cuts in library services, most people who are excluded will have no access to computers whatsoever. Absolutely. Stephen, don't you? Makes a, makes a strong point, and um, I, I really would like to know what assessment the Minister have made of, the, of this particular problem. Um, I can only quote to him evidence that was submitted by Community Housing Cymru in its evidence to Select Committee last year, where they said um, uh, the presumption of a predominantly online self-service process is concerning because it's our experience that a large percentage of people lack not only the knowledge and accessibility to make claims online, but also the confidence. And they quote, uh, we, we know that a large percentage of social housing tenants do not have access to the internet at home. For example, in 2010, Ty Callon, a housing association based in Blyna Gwent, found that 42% of their tenants have access to the internet. So obviously a shockingly low level. And Blyna Gwent remains one of the most digitally excluded areas in Wales. And I know that very much from conversations with my honourable friend, the member for Blyna Gwent. Um, it also, they also go on, there's a lack of clarity in Wales as to where independent advice can be sought on universal credit and citizen advice bureau are already inundated and welfare benefit inquiries have now overtaken debt inquiries in number. These are very, very serious uh, concerns. Third, Mr Chair, I want to briefly mention uh, that in the spirit of openness I announced on Twitter that I would be holding this uh, debate and I asked constituents to come forward with their concerns, uh, one of which was raised, which I know many others have also, is also that they fear risks for women in particular um, and indeed relationships in the home as a result of the changes to payments, uh, who will have control of money, particularly when of course child benefit in the past was predominantly, was always paid to the mother and provided some security. And can the Minister please reassure my constituents and others who've raised uh, concerns on this vitally important matter? Uh, I would like to make a little bit of progress and then I'll certainly give way. Um, finally, Mr Chair, I do, I do wish to turn to some of the very real concerns uh, by organisations working with vulnerable clients, uh, particularly in the housing sector in Wales. And last week I met with representatives of CADWIN, a housing association which has um, significant numbers of homes and tenants in the Grangetown and Butte Town areas of my constituency. And they are deeply worried about what they see as a perfect storm of the coming together of the bedroom tax benefit cap, uh, which incidentally affects Cardiff second only after London, and universal credit. And they showed me extremely worrying figures about uh, rent payment and risk of arrears and, and high-risk customers, and the challenges that this will clearly create for themselves and, and other registered social landlords across Wales. And I'd like to understand from the Minister what forecasts have the DWP made of the financial challenges that might be faced by registered social landlords as a result of increasing rent arrears. I apologise, I'd give way. <laughs> Probably Jonathan Edwards. To the uh, honourable uh, gentleman for giving way, and he's made some very strong and very valid uh, points during his, his speech. Uh, but I, I know that what I'm about to refer to is before his time in this place. But does he agree with me that it was a bit of a serious political miscalculation for the Labour Party to abstain on the second reading vote on the Welfare Reform Act, which has led to these changes being implemented? As, as the Honourable Gentleman says, it was before my time in this place, so I'll probably refrain from commenting on that. But, uh, but uh, um, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make some progress. But, um, uh, Mr Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to report, I was talking about CADWIN, uh, that they're, they're taking very proactive measures to support their tenants, to adapt to the swathe of changes, from help with jam jar accounts, to visits in person, uh, to vulnerable tenants, to organising property swapping mechanisms on Facebook. These are the methods that they're, they're reverting to. Um, but there is a limit to what they're going to be able to achieve to mitigate the impact of all these changes together, particularly with a hard core of tenants who will prove difficult to access, reach and support, and fundamentally to be able to adapt to the universal credit and these other changes. And of course, in relation to the bedroom tax, there are simply not the properties to move into. And if that's not enough, Mr Chair, let's take the perspective of the largest local authority in Wales, Cardiff, although I do know that obviously these concerns are shared by other many neighbouring local authorities, including the Vale of Glamorgan, also in my own constituency. And I've been speaking with officials there, and uh, just quote from something that they shared with me last week. They said, uh, with regard to universal credit, this is expected to start in Cardiff from February 2014, but there is still considerable uncertainty about when this will be fully implemented, and it's going to affect 140 jobs in the Cardiff local authority. They face concerns about a lack of clarity about how face-to-face -face services will be delivered. They currently see 1,000 customers a week about housing benefits face-to-face, -face, and the insistence on digital by default fails to recognise how many low-income households cannot afford broadband and how much help is needed by vulnerable tenants to claim benefits. Payment direct to tenants in social housing is likely to result in arrears, evictions and homelessness, and indications from the pilots are that tenants are falling into arrears. I've already mentioned that evidence, and there is still no clarity about the circumstances in which payments will be made to a landlord. 
Um, I will keep playing. Uh, I hear what the Honourable Chairman's got to say. Like he, me, he's a supporter of the co-op's uh, campaign against legal loan sharks. Does he agree with me in places like my own constituency, it states in my own constituency and his home, that the legal loan sharks are positively rubbing their hands together, yeah. waiting for residents Absolutely. to come to them? Uh, I would absolutely agree with the comments of my honourable friend, the member for Isloid. I mean, I, I've seen the explosion of, of loan sharks and, and legal loan sharks on, on our streets, whether they're people knocking on the doors or whether it's uh, opening up properties on the, on the high street. And I, again, commend the work of organisations like Cardiff and Vale Credit Union who are trying to provide alternative options. Um, and I just return to one last point that Council raised, which is that budgeting issues are also a concern, as universal credit will be paid monthly in arrears. This is one of the major concerns expressed by customers visiting our roadshows. They, again, have been taking proactive steps. Low-income families who depend depend on this money will have no resource at all if there are any problems with the receipt of payment. And obviously I don't want to forecast the future, but you know, government record, I have to say, in, 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 in all former administrations on implementing large-scale IT projects, that leaves much to be desired, and I think that's a very, very serious concern. And Linda Thorne, who is the Cabinet Member for Housing in Cardiff Council, wrote to me uh, just yesterday and said, I am concerned that the end result of many of these changes will be an increase in homelessness and the transfer of extra financial burdens falling on local council taxpayers in terms of picking up the cost of a reduction in the collection rate of council tax, the extra cost of providing help and support to those who need support completing claims, and a rise in homelessness created from direct payments. And she also makes a very important point, which is that Cardiff has more private landlords providing accommodation to those on benefits than all the registered social landlords housing associations put together. And private landlords have indicated that they are likely to revert back to, into only letting to those in work, resulting in even more families and individuals becoming homeless, thus costing council taxpayers even more than we currently have. And they currently have 500 families and individuals in temporary accommodation at any one time. And I wondered what the Minister's reflections were on these very legitimate concerns raised by a major housing association in my constituency and indeed the largest local authority in Wales. Would he uh, briefly... I will give way. Um, Kevin I'm Brennan. very grateful because he's been very generous. Wouldn't it be ironic if this government were actually to bring about a situation where, as he's just described, private landlords are not in a position where they're able to rent out uh, their accommodation to the people most in need because they can't be guaranteed that they're going to receive their rent. Isn't that the sign of a policy that's ideological, not based on evidence and common sense? Apologies, Mr Chairman. <laughs> I recognise that he's new to, the, new to the chamber, but we would like to leave some Absolutely. time for the minister to respond. No, 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 no. <laughs> Stephen Doty. Thank you, Mr Chair, um, and I absolutely will give him some time uh, very shortly. I'm just coming to the end of my remarks. Um, but, Mr. S Mr Chair, if, if those uh, examples aren't good enough, you can just look at the example of uh, the NEA um, in Wales, who work very extensively on fuel poverty, who said recently sweeping changes to welfare reform, including universal credit, will hit Welsh households hard in the coming months and will have major implications for the Welsh Government's plans to tackle poverty, including fuel poverty in Wales. And indeed, the comments of uh, my friend, the Housing Minister in Wales, Mr Hugh Lewis, who, who said, you know, we can't make any distinction here. I think it would be foolish if people were under the impression that this is going to be something that just affects people in social housing. So, Mr Chair, in conclusion, I think there are huge concerns. Uh, these are not just my concerns. These are not just the concerns of people who've raised them with me on the street or indeed in correspondence uh, to my constituency office, but they're also raised by the largest local authority in Wales, a number of housing associations, the bodies representing those people, and a wide range of other experts. Wales will be disproportionately hit by these uh, measures, will be disproportionately hit by what could be an extremely chaotic um, set of reforms. And I'm, frank, you know, I'm frankly seeing very poor evidence of support and engagement from the DWP ministers and others and I fear there will be many unintended consequences for some of the most vulnerable people across Wales. Thank you, Mr Chair. Minister. Uh, thank you very much, and can I congratulate the Honourable Member for securing uh, this uh, debate. Uh, and he's raised some important issues, but I, I would counsel some caution. Uh, it's very easy to create uncertainty uh, amongst his constituents by raising some of these stories in a way actually is not balanced and doesn't reflect the support that will be in place. Uh, and he also, I think, actually identified the answer to his own problems uh, in one of the quotes he gave from a housing association, actually about the additional work a housing association is going to do to help support its tenants, like the jam jar uh, bank accounts, like additional support on budgeting, all things that we're intending to deliver. But actually, this, this support around the introduction of universal credit will not just make its introduction easier, but will also improve the quality of life and the financial stability of families as well. Uh, so I don't think you should overlook the beneficial impact this will have in improving financial capability. Now, I've got 12 minutes uh, and I've got a lot of questions to answer uh, in that time, and I want to correct some of the misapprehensions and mis some of the misunderstandings uh, that have been raised uh, in this uh, debate. Universal credit is the cornerstone 
of the government's welfare reform programme, and it will simplify the benefits system and tackle welfare dependency by making work pay. And our aim is to offer seamless support for people making the transition into work. No longer will people find themselves in the absurd position where their benefit is disrupted at the moment they start work. Our reforms will ensure that people are better off than they are on benefits. In Wales, we estimate that once universal credit is fully up and running, some 200,000 households will be eligible for higher payments under universal credit, <coughs> typically seeing an increase of almost £160 per month. And the proportion of people in Wales who would stand to lose more than 70% of their increased earnings by moving to work of 10 hours a week will reduce under universal credit from 32%, as it is in the system we've inherited from the previous government, to 3% under universal credit. That's why I think that delivering this reform is important for the people of Wales. It will make people better off in work. It will make work pay. And it will reduce the risk of taking up more work, or indeed doing more itself. Now, let me uh, deal with some of the specific concerns. He raised the issue about uh, benefits being paid in arrears on a monthly basis. And I think it's important that the new system is actually designed around the patterns of modern working life. Given that three quarters of the employed population are already paid on a monthly basis, that's something that I think people are familiar with doing when we move on to universal credit. Now, of course, we recognise that some people may struggle to budget, and we're making provision to ensure that they do not fall through the cracks. We're working with banks and credit unions, such as the ones he's quoted, to explore suitable financial products that may help people budget and put money by each month to fulfil their responsibilities, to pay their rent and other household bills. Around 4.2 million DWP claimants already have a bank account. Now, we know that historically some people, well, learning again, have experienced difficulties in accessing, un accessing and using banking products. We want to ensure that claimants have access to a basic bank account with safe and secure standing order and direct debit facilities. Now, let me move on to the point about uh, online services. As he indicated, the service will be online. We want people to be able to make a claim and report changes as they would do with online banking. If people are going to be, uh, participate effectively in today's modern labour market, then they're going to have to be conversant with digital tools. In the words of my noble friend Lord Freud, uh, digitisation is a social imperative. And of course, we must, we, we can and must do more to ensure that people are able to access services online. We don't want the digital divide in his constituency and others to persist. We must tackle that. This is a very good way of tackling that. I'm surprised the uh, benches opposite are so resistant to actions that we can take to help tackle that digital uh, divide and improve, and improve social inclusion. And uh, we, you know, we are looking already at some of the local authority pilots that have been done, two of which are in Wales, one in Caerphilly, one in Newport, that are helping understand what support we need to give to help people move into universal credit. We're going to use this, these pilots to learn the lessons and apply them as we develop further stage of delivering universal credit, because we do have ambitious targets for digital take-up of our services. Now, I'm, he, had, he had more than his fair share, so let me try and deal with more of his questions. So he talked about this project being behind schedule. I've no idea, Mr Sheridan, where he has this from. Actually, the, the programme is not behind schedule. It's actually on time. And I would counsel him. He'll, he'll learn this more as he's in this house. Never believe what you read in the paper. Yeah, uh, the, no, it, yeah, it is actually, you know, this is on time and on schedule. The uh, first stage will start in April, the end of April this year in the Pathfinder area in Greater Manchester in the North West, and will continue to roll out nationally. But I would, would say this, and he was actually right, he, he made a point about the failure of previous governments to deliver big IT projects on time. And we saw that in the previous government. You know, I think all of us in this House uh, who have had to work with the complexity of tax credits on behalf of our constituents will recognise the failure uh, and the problems that that system has created uh, for our constituents. The way in which we are, we are working through the implementation of this, through our pathfinding approach, enables us to proceed with implementation in phases. And it's an approach that we've used in other large programmes. For example, the new child maintenance scheme, we've done this, use this pathfinder process. In implementing the personal independence uh, allowance, replacing uh, DLA, we will begin with a few thousand new claims in April this year before rolling it out. So the stage and methodical approach we take to rolling it out, prove before you move, means that we've got to fully implement a change once we're satisfied with the experience and live environment that's safe to do so. 
That's why we're rolling out the Pathfinder in April this year in, uh, in Greater Manchester and Cheshire, which allows us time to test during this period with a view to successful implementation nationally later in the year. And I think this thoughtful and considered approach to rolling out is important. It will ensure we've got, we'll test uh, the operation to run UC, uh, the people cap capabilities required to support the service, communications, implementation, and the behaviour of claimants, and how to ensure we respond effectively to unintended uh, consequences. Let me just touch on the issue of direct payments, which uh, he, he raised. Now, I understand the concerns that, about the payment of direct housing costs to claimants, but we remain of the view that paying housing costs direct is an important way of helping people to manage their own finances and becoming more independent. The emerging evidence from the two demonstration projects, including the one in Torfen, does not suggest that large numbers of claimants will suddenly fall into uh, arrears. On the contrary, because the take-on of, uh, take of claims is going to be gradual over a period of years, there will be no big bang effect and there's no real evidence of any likely sudden impact on landlords' incomes. There will be lessons to learn from these projects and we'll continue to monitor the position very carefully. They will be, enable us to test trigger points at different levels of arrears so that if a tenant does fall behind in their rent, action can be taken, including, for, including if necessary, switching back payment to a landlord for a period and offering additional support to a tenant. I think we should be te treating people who universal, receiving universal credits as adults. We should be encouraged them to stand on their own, for, to, be, to manage their money as others manage their money, particularly as we'll have to, as they move in to increase their earnings. But I think the, the, the support mechanisms in place are very help, important. I think it does give... Uh, Landlords are really incentive to work with their tenants around employment issues to help them into work. It does, I think, encourage them to work more closely with the tenants to understand their financial capabilities and what support might be needed. Uh, but I don't think we should be infantising uh, the universal credit uh, recipients in the way that honourable members seem to be suggesting. Now, we've just, there's been discussion made about local support services. And we're working in partnership with local authority associations, including the Welsh Local Government Association, on a local support services framework. This will ensure that there are effective local partnerships that are put in place to help claimants with getting online and also to help with learning uh, how to manage their household budgets. And of course, as I said earlier, we learn a great deal from the Pathfinder phase of universal uh, credit in doing so. Uh, to ensure that we uh, have uh, taken into account the concerns of authorities in Wales, uh, Wales is also represented in the development of the universal credit across a number of fora, pilots and projects, including a senior stakeholder group, a local authority transitional working group, local authority finance and commercial group, a local support services task force, direct payment demonstration project, and local authority-led pilots. And let me say just a little bit more about the pilots. Now, we are currently running 12 local authority-led pilots, uh, and we aim to conclude those by the uh, end of September this year. The aim of these pilots is to test and inform the development of a face-to-face -face delivery model. The pilots will provide important practical lessons on delivering services in an innovative way at the local level, including triage, that's, that is, working with claimants to identify their needs, how these can be met, and where support can be accessed locally. Online access, so we can get more claimants using online resources, and where they cannot, providing assisted support to get online locally at libraries, community centres and other community buildings where uh, PCs may be accessible. Uh, budgeting support, so people can manage their finances independently. And of course, underpinned with a work focus, helping claimants find and stay in work through a range of training and support networks. And we have been working very closely with local authorities on a framework for delivering local support to those who need it. And we'll be announcing further details of this very shortly, because we do recognise the point you made. And you've made a very, very valid point about ensuring that support is available to the local level. You know, and it is in none of our interests for uh, claimants of universal credit uh, to be left high and dry. Yeah, and that's why we are working to make sure that the support is in place, whether it's getting online, whether it's uh, debt advice, whether it's managing their money, whether it's the right bank accounts or jam jar accounts enabled to, to manage their money. We want to provide the infrastructure around universal credit in order to help claimants. And I think it's by doing it that way and actually focusing on how we tackle these problems, rather than simply throwing our hands up in horror and saying it's all doomed to fail, that we're actually going to provide the right outcomes uh, for his constituents and mine. Because it is absolutely right, Mr. Sheridan, that we do all that we can
to ensure that people know that work pays, people in Wales will be better off as a consequence uh, of the introduction of universal credit, that they don't see the dis disruption that happens at the moment when they move from out-of-work benefits uh, to in-work benefits. The system is here to make sure people understand it is better to work than not to work, better to earn more than to earn less. There won't be a situation that many are in having to turn down bonuses from their employers because it doesn't work with the benefits system. We need to tackle some of the problems in the past to give our people hope for the future. Order, order. The sitting